So, the question I'm asking myself is, are these Well C MPPT solar charge controllers fake? Are they a fraud? Do they work? Do they do MPPT? So let's open this thing up and have a look inside. So the first thing you see when you open this thing up is this cable. And we need to pull that cable off. And that cable is on the reset button. But that bothers me because you've got a microcontroller in there and it should just run. It should never need to be reset. That reset button to me smacks of the thing locks up, you contact the seller or the manufacturer and say, look, my charge controller keeps locking up and their response is, oh, just hit the reset button. That fixes it. But that's a bit of a cop-out, isn't it? The thing should not lock up. It shouldn't crash. It should keep running forever. For 10, 20, 30 years, it, uh, it shouldn't need a reset button. And the reset button just says to me, there's a problem with this. And um, that's a very easy get-out-of-jail card. Now, the other intriguing thing inside here is this black box here, right in the middle. And on the top it says MPPT Well C. And it's very clearly an attempt to hide what's inside because the whole thing is filled with potting compound. In fact, it's more like concrete. It's really tough stuff. So it took me a while to hack this thing apart, but hack it apart I did. And uh, let's take that off. And inside, what do we have? A single chip. What is the chip? Let's see if I can get, catch it in the light. I can't very easily. But anyway, I can tell you it's a 555 timer. And it's on a little board. And there are obviously some resistors and capacitors on the back of the board. Can't see them because they're all covered in this concrete potting compound. But it doesn't look very clever to me. It doesn't look like it's worth having a a black cap over the top to hide what's going on in there. It all looks a bit suspicious to me. 555 timer. Now the thing is, look, you've got three connection points there, there and there. Just three. And those are the only three points that connect down onto the board underneath. So what's that? VCC, ground and, well, output. So it looks like that's an oscillator which just has power in and output. Doesn't look very clever. So uh, let's have a look at that. So the other thing I've done is I've made a, a list of all the uh, semiconductors. There's a PIC microcontroller uh, up the top there. And on the sides, attached uh, via these um, thermal pads, are MOSFETs, voltage regulators, there's a bipolar transistor on this side, and I've made a list. So you've got lots of the 75NF75 uh, MOSFETs. You've got the PIC 16F716 microcontroller, a couple of opto-isolators there, TIP42 bipolar transistor, and then two regulators, the 7812 and a 7905, which is a minus 5 volt regulator. Other things of note on here are this inductor here. Now I did think this was just a bit of filtering. It's a very, very thick cable inductor. But of course, once this secret box was opened and there's no inductor in there, this is the only inductor on the board. So this is the main switching inductor for the DC to DC converter to do, uh, well, to get maximum power out of the solar panel. But that's not a very high value inductor. It's air cord for a start. It needs a ferrite for higher inductance. Um, so it's not looking very promising really. There's going to be very little um, storage, magnetic storage ability on that thing. Here we have a, it looks like a varistor. It's, it's straight across the solar panel connections. I've marked those here. Panel plus and minus. And there's the big capacitor there thousand mic at 50 volts and that's also straight across the solar panel. Uh, here there's a polyfuse 
Now 1800, as far as I remember, is 18 amps. So it's a big fuse. That's on the um, load side. So the load disconnect consists of that fuse, this MOSFET, and then something to make a decision on whether to switch it off, probably just low voltage on the battery. Uh, and that's quite high current, all of that stuff there. So this is the back of the board and at first glance it looks like there's a fair bit of high current tracking here. You can see that these very thick uh, copper wires have been soldered onto the PCB tracks. And all of the six connection points here come through these reasonably wide tracks. But then you get to this one and this is, uh, I've marked it up here, panel negative. So that's panel positive there, this is panel negative. Now, this one doesn't go anywhere, or at least doesn't go to much. Uh, that's the... I can't remember now. What is it? It's, uh, well, the varistor is on there. That's one connection. The negative of the capacitor is on there. That's another one. And, of course, the ground pin on this genius 555 timer secret box thing is also on there and that's that that and that but it doesn't go anywhere else other than this tiny little thin track which goes to this VIA that then jumps across to uh, this is the 7812 voltage regulator the zero volt pin on there and that has a track behind there which goes along to here uh, where it's actually go can I see? Yeah, it goes to the centre pick uh, connection on this. This is the MOSFET, so that's the drain. And then the source, which is there, runs down, bizarrely, to an LED, uh, but also then goes to the source on this pair of MOSFETs. And these are bonded together with this enormous great uh, piece of tin copper wire running across their drains. Now the drains don't go anywhere else. So these are kind of back-to-back -back MOSFETs. I don't quite understand what this is doing, but the two, uh, the two drains are linked and then it comes back out. There's the source of the second MOSFET and that is now battery, battery negative. So, solar panel negative does eventually go to battery negative through this big chain of devices. Uh, well, these three MOSFETs. But it goes through this very, very thin track, and that's not going to take 15 amps. So it looks to me like this has been designed for quite small solar panels, and if you put a thumping great solar panel on this, you're just going to blow that track or blow that VAA. They're just going to burn out. Um, so although the load side of the circuit, you know, with this big 18 amp polyfuse and the MOSFET there and these enormous heavy metal lumps that have been put on the track. Although that's high current, the solar panel side of this doesn't appear to be. So the final thing I'm going to do now is um, just watch this connected up to a battery. Actually what I want to do is look at that 555 and see what's coming out of that. So I've hooked um, this battery up, it's just a little gel battery with one of my super accurate three decimal place uh, LED voltmeters there, 12 and a half volts. And for a solar panel, because I'm in the workshop now, I'm just going to use one of these. This is a um, 12 volt power adapter, but it's the old transformer type, linear, non-switch mode. And these things behave very much like solar panels. They've got quite high resistance. Uh, this is 12 volt nominal, but it's probably about 20 volts coming out of this. And then you pull it down it's quite tolerant of being uh, well having its voltage pulled down so uh, I'll plug that in and uh, get a scope on that 555 I'm interested to know what that does so I've plugged in the power adapter and the battery voltage is rising up 12.9 and uh, the lights on the controller you can see that the charge lights flickering on and off what have we got there out of focus but the no oh, come well there was now battery light that's it so let's put the camera on its perch 
and uh, move that there and uh, get the oscilloscope. So apologies for the rather muddled uh, look of this image but I wanted to get the oscilloscope in. Now the oscilloscope is connected if I can find my screwdriver, yep here it is to this point here which is the output of the 555 circuit and you can see on the screen here that it's a square wave, it's um, a little bit more high than it is low so slightly over 50% mark space, about 60% probably but the frequency, look at that, this number here 4.25 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz? 4 kilohertz, that's that's low, that's audible um, and 4 kilohertz with that little air cord inductor just isn't going to do anything and that kind of explains why this thing doesn't get anywhere near putting the solar panel into its maximum power point it just sort of makes a little bit of effort to do a bit of DC to DC conversion but it's really nothing, it's really not an MPPT charge controller at all. Now if I take out the solar panel, it's actually my power supply, you can see that that oscillator just packs up. So this 555 is powered by the solar panel input. The solar panel power, um, remember this voltage regulator here, the 7812, uh, the 12 volt. It's giving 12 volts on the power, the VCC, uh, which is there, and that's relative to ground here, and then this is the oscillator output. And the oscillator output goes directly to the gate pin on this MOSFET down here, which is doing in conjunction with these other two MOSFETs, which I don't fully understand, to be honest. But this one's doing the switching, um, pulling the negative of solar panel down to negative of battery. And it's achieving this uh, 0.3 volts of um, DC to DC conversion. But that's pretty hopeless, really. 4 kilohertz, this pathetic little air cord inductor here which must have a very low inductance value it's just not going to do MPPT and the other thing is uh, the other thing is I was going to say before my iPod memory filled up and I had to delete a load of videos is that this charge controller doesn't track so if I bring the scope back in here this um, 4, kilohot 4, 4 kilohertz oscillation which is coming from this 555 there's no way to vary the mark space ratio there's no way to vary the frequency this thing has three pins going to it so, uh, VCC ground and the output so it doesn't vary and even if I take the power, the solar panel power off you can see it collapses down but the mark space ratio doesn't vary so there's no clever um, voltage controlled mechanism or anything like that there's nothing clever about this thing actually I think I agree with the guys who say it's a fake it is really, it's a out and out fraud um, it's a fixed uh, oscillator so you get a little bit of as I say DC to DC conversion it's not tracking, it won't track, it will not track the maximum power point of the solar panel it doesn't even get anywhere near the maximum power point of the solar panel it just pushes the uh, voltage of the solar panel ever so slightly higher than the voltage of the battery it's not very good